welcome in Jivas. It's your Easy Jivas Game Podcast for the week of June 10th. Now we have a very special week this week. And I'm very excited because this week, or at least this episode specifically, is going to be centered around, of course, Summer Games Fest, which has happened with Summer Games Fest. A couple of the announcements. We're going to be going over the conference. A couple of things I've picked up throughout the news week. Very slow news week because, of course, the conference. People want to stay away from that. Makes sense. But even more exciting, we have Xbox coming up. Xbox two-hour-ish showcase. Of course, Xbox and Starfield are going to be going one after the other, respectively. And I'm excited, although worried, because Xbox, and let's just be honest, every time I'm excited about Xbox, they disappoint me in almost every single way. So let's see if this time it's different. But, of course... Why would this time be different than any other times? Who knows? But let's hope for the best. Of course, this is the Shivers Game Podcast. I come to you every single Friday, except for this one. Now, the reason is, one, I needed to get this uh, Summer Games Fest uh, taken down. Two, I'm experimenting with different days, different times, figuring out what's best for this show specifically. I always put it up Friday and always did pretty well, and it depended on the show, of course. How well did I think I'm going to stick to Fridays, but I am going to start sprinkling shows maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday, maybe Monday. Just try and get a feel for what people would like better, what seems to be performing better. And also, I've never done anything like that specifically for the show. I've done different clips and things different days, and I've done one offs on different days to see what would happen. But I wanted to see how it would affect the traffic of the show. Now, if you have a preference for a specific day or you like how things have been or if you have any insights on what you'd like of course as always comment down below tweet at me at you at a thousand we can have a discussion about that of course you know what to do like comment subscribe timestamps description below we're going to get into the show very quickly because i want to talk about summer games fest here's a couple of things i saw this of course this is not so rapid fire microsoft charged 20 million by ftc for Oh, illegally collecting children's information on Xbox. Now, 20 million, of course, nothing uh, to them, but let's talk about some of the complaints on this. So this is an FTC press release. Let's read from them. Quote, our proposed order makes it easier for parents to protect their children's privacy on Xbox. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not from the FTC. This is from the specific... Uh, oh, so this is their comments. So this is the full press release from FTC. I'm going to just read... It verbatim. Microsoft will pay $20 million to settle Federal Trade Commission charges that it violated the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act by collecting personal information from children who signed up to its Xbox gaming system without notifying their parents or obtaining their parents' consent and by Ill illegally retaining children's personal information. This is from Microsoft. Quote, our proposed order makes it easier for parents to protect the children's privacy on Xbox and limits what information Microsoft can collect and retain about kids, said Samuel Levine, director of FTC's Bureau of Customer, or sorry, Consumer Protection. Quote, this action should also make it abundantly clear that kids' avatars, biometric data, and health information are not exempt from COPA. C-O-P-P-A, of course. End quote. As part of the proposed order, order filed by the Department of Justice on behalf of the FTC, Microsoft will be required to take several steps to bolster privacy protections for child users of its Xbox system. For example, the order will extend COPA protections to third-party gaming publishers with whom Microsoft shares children's data. In addition, the order makes clear that avatars generated from a child's image and biometric and health information are covered by the COPA rule. When collected with other personal data, the order must be approved by a federal court before it can go into effect. It goes on and on. It's pretty lengthy. You could, of course, read this on FTCs online. I think we get the idea here. Uh, it, they were keeping several informations about children, uh, specifically the minor, I assume, accounts. And they were giving out to third parties and things, just like they do everyone. And it looks like they didn't discriminate like they're supposed to. They're getting fined $20 million. It is not even a slap to the wrist. It is like a pinky flick i guess like it's not it's not even that crazy i mean it's 20 million dollars microsoft makes that i think in like two minutes so they don't really care but it is still interesting to bring up and they will be changing that i assume they will be adding it to like some sort of terms agreement that 
changes it, I guess. Or makes it better. Who knows? We'll see. Very quickly, Diablo 4 becomes Blizzard's entertainment fastest selling game of all time. I will talk more about Diablo in what I've been playing uh, right after the, sh uh, the main thing of the show. We'll get to that. Star Wars, the older public going third party as Bioware focuses on Mass Effect and, and Dragon Age. I'm curious if everyone saw this over the week. Uh, so pretty much, and I'm, I'm sure people have forgotten, Bioware has been uh, helping development of the older public this entire time. Now, if you don't remember what the Star Wars The Old Republic is, first off, it's a very good MMORPG based in the Star Wars Old Republic era. Very literal. It was meant to be kind of like a spiritual sector to their, of course, Knights of the Old Republic series, I believe. I remember when this was coming out. I, I was cognizant of this coming out. And I was always excited, and then I realized what it was. And I was like, oh, I don't care about this. But let's talk about it. So December 20th, 2011 is when this releases. This is, if I remember correctly, before Star Wars was even sold. So this is still the only thing really living from that era. Because I believe Star Wars was so When was Star Wars sold? 2012, yeah. So this is a year before. And it's still been going on to this day, and they're actually going to be giving it to a third-party uh, studio called Broadsword Online Games. Uh, and this is according to sources at IGN, actually. This is written by Rebecca Valentine. There's a couple other things that, that uh, you can comment on. Uh, the old, uh, This is one of the suburbs I, I highlighted. The agreement would see the Old Republic handed over to current Ultima Online and Dark Age of Camulet developer Broadsword Online, which is run by former Mythic Entertainment co-founder and Bioware VP Rob Denton who previously worked on the Old Republic in its earlier days. After the publication of the story, EA addressed the news in a following statement, quote, Af almost 12 years after launch, Star Wars The Old Republic remains a success and continues to grow its dedicated and passionate community. We're so proud of the work the team has done and the future of the game and the community continues to be very bright. We're evaluating how we give the game and the team the best opportunity to grow and evolve, which involves conversations with Broadsword, a boutique studio that specializes in delivering online community-driven experiences. Our goal is to do what is best for the game and its players. And quote. Currently, roughly 70 to 80 people are part of the core development team of the Old Republic, more than half of whom are expected to move to Broadsword. Those remaining with EA would have an opportunity to look for roads elsewhere, but may otherwise face layoffs so there could be layoffs of the remaining people who are left they're taking about half that team going to broadsword and i guess maintaining the game i'll be curious to see if we get any additional content for the game i assume we're gonna start seeing maybe this game slowly go away i mean they wouldn't get rid of it if they weren't getting some money and of course they're probably some sort of contract that they get a percentage cut from everything or maybe they're just literally paying broadsword to take it and they still get money i don't know it could be a very complicated contract specifically, but maybe we're going to see this game slowly start to uh, go away. Maybe. I don't know. You wouldn't you wouldn't give it to someone else for it to slowly go away, would you? Or, or maybe, I guess, to just maintain the game? I don't know. It's been going on for so long. It's actually one of the rare MMOs that are still going on that's actually popular. And it's still very popular. I mean, plenty of people play it. There's, it's not running for no reason. I'll be curious to see how this pans out. I I love the game. I played it for a little bit. It's just so big and so massive, and I'm not a big PC guy that I always just fall out. And I'm I wish they could come to consoles. Clearly, they can't or won't, uh, or both. But we'll have to see. This is usually where what have you been playing has been going. I'm gonna skip that and put it at the end of the show this week because I really want to get into a couple things. So we're gonna go into rumor roundup, and then we're gonna go straight into summer games fest, breaking it down and all these things. So let's start with the rumor roundup. There's only one this week, and it's actually from PlayStation Lifestyle, and I didn't see this um, from them. So this is strange. So we have a Persona Three remake and Final Fantasy Nine remake leaker saying, hey, uh, there's a Final Fantasy X remake, and also it's coming out in 2026. Pretty big claims, also knowing that the time um, timing is so interesting, but the name of the user is I Am Here Too, and they have actually deleted their Reset Era account and scrubbed their post hinting at the uh, Final Fantasy X remake's launch, uh, which will also coincide with the game's 25th anniversary. In the fall of 2026. So it looks like it. it ah, I mean, they were right about the other thing. So it's hard to be like, well, 
why would I believe this? But they say the date, which is strange. And then they deleted everything. So maybe they got found out. I'm not really sure. I'm very curious what they're going off of and how. So how did they know that? Like they knew like, oh, by the way, it's coming out 2026, the 25th anniversary. I don't know. Of course, they were right about two other things. So it's hard to be like, oh, there's nothing here. But of course, there is something here. He has or I should say they have validity of some kind. Uh, There's not much to say about this other than they said it. They've been right about other things. So they might have heard about this. It's not uncommon that, of course, leakers are right about other things and wrong about other things. It is interesting that they deleted it because maybe they were found out about how specific the day was. I don't know. We'll have to say. Summer Game Fest. Let's get into it. Let's break down the show. This is going to be me breaking it down beat by beat. Uh, I'm going to stop if I have anything to say about it. If not, I'm going to read it out, do a small snippet, and then move on. They open with Prince of Persia Lost Crown. This is January 18th, 2024. Very, ha- very happy about this. Ubisoft very clearly kind of stagnant and is going back to their Assassin's Creed kind of formula that they had in the kind of early xbox one generation where they're just going to keep releasing xbox one and ps4 a generation where they're just going to keep releasing assassin's creeds that sucks we're going to see how that benefits them it didn't work out the last time maybe it works out this time i don't know but prince of persia lost crown looks great 2d metroidvania type game if you actually read the press release i'm very excited i'm very very excited I have played a couple of the Prince of Persia's, but I have not played them. I mean, I played them on the PS2 probably when I was 12, something like that. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, it's been that long. So very excited to see what comes out of this. I have nothing too much else to add because they didn't give too much else. And also, it seems like it's not well received because I, I did see an article that said that the YouTube video has, has actually more dislikes than likes or something. I was like, what? That doesn't seem right. So let me know if you actually cared about this game. This is a, one. This is up there for like games of the show for me. Not like super up there. Probably top five. Next up, Mortal Kombat 1. Very exciting to see Ed Boon himself comes out. Very cool to see him, of course. And they detail how the game's going to work. Of course, if you played Mortal Kombat um, 11, you would know that this game has a completely different universe, completely different take on the characters based on what happens in that game. And there's a couple things that are different, and they detailed it. First, uh, one of the fun things, Sub-Zero and Scorpion are going to be brothers. It looks like Raiden. Of course, a Thunder God is now just seems like a guy with Thunder Powers, which is cool. There's going to be cameo characters, which will almost work like support characters from like some of the Marvel vs. Capcom games, but you don't switch to them. You just use them as support. Uh, and that's going to give you more moves based on that character. Apparently, there are different button inputs when you summon them that you can do that will give you different moves based on the character. Which is very cool. I like this. This this makes sense now. Uh, we got the leaks of the cameo characters that we were unsure what it meant. This it makes sense now. We're gonna get these kind of cameo characters that support characters that have their kind of own unique flair on things, and they get to do these kind of support moves in the middle. And it looks awesome. I like it. It does look like more Mortal Kombat, so it doesn't look like they're changing the formula too too much. But maybe the cameo characters were gonna be enough to really switch things up for hardcore fighting game fans. For me, this is just a, this is enough for me to come back. I like the other Mortal Kombat games. Actually, I like their story too. Surprisingly, this gets me excited. I'm gonna play it. Path of Exile Two looks great. I'm not a huge Path of Exile One fan. I, I didn't really get into it. If this is your game, I think you'll love it. If not, it's not for you. I, there's not really much else to say about this one. Um. It was, I, hold on, let's get the thing up here right now. Path of Exile 2. Let's go to, let's go to the gameplay. Oh, it's only videos. I hate when they don't have text on these things. We're going to skip it. Path of Exile 2. They literally said there's a, it's a different version of Diablo. It it might be more simple. Um, I don't remember how the first one played. This one looks slightly different. I don't know, but we'll have to see. Uh, This is a quick one. Street Fighter 6 skins were in Exo Primal, uh, the game uh, that comes out uh, July 14th. Cool. Nothing else to say there. Uh, up next, Nick Cage came out and said, uh, and a reveal that he's going to be in Dead by Daylight, which is hilarious. Uh, and he's literally just Nick Cage. He's one of the survivors. Shout, uh, give a good shout out to the Dead, Light Day, Dead by Daylight community, fans, and the developers. I'm so happy when they get things and when cool things are happening over there. I'm not a player. I've never even tried the game, but I'm always happy to see stuff because it's always cool. It's always like... Um, 
it's always happy to see that that game thriving and because it's, it's kind of unique in how it plays. And I always like seeing like they have like Saw in there. And of course, now they have Nicolas Cage as a survivor. Now they have and I saw they had a, a Halloween like Michael Myers. It's so many cool things. So always happy to see them. Uh, Witcher 3, a Netflix show, got a little sneak peek. I thought it was cool. I'm excited for Witcher 3. It sucks that this season the last season. Wink. I know it's not, but uh, Henry Cavill's leaving and I will have no reason to watch this show after that. Uh, let's see. Witchfire. Yes, Witchfire is up next. September 20th. This is going to be coming into early access. It looks kind of cool. It looks like a gun-based magic-ish type game. Uh, I'm excited. I have nothing really else to add. It, it, early access kind of... Whenever I see early access, I go like, uh, okay. Because I, I like think games just coming out. I'm not really a big early access guy, and it's always early access on like Steam or something, and I'm like, I'm not going to play that. So hopefully it comes uh, to consoles eventually, which did I don't think they released that. I think it, they literally just said the early access date. All right, let me double check. Let's see. Yeah, September twentieth. This is early access, and no no information on where else it could be. Except Crossfire Sierra Squad, we saw this at the PlayStation Showcase. Uh, this is just coming out in August. If you're into PSVR, it looks great. I heard Crossfire was good. Everyone liked Firewall, I, I remember more, though. So this is your Firewall Zero game, I guess, for PSVR 2. Remnant from Ashes 2. This looks cool. It It's like a Soulsborne shooter is what I saw. Uh, now, it does seem like a lot of people are, are going into the Soulsborne um Naming scheme, I'll be curious to see what actually is Souls-like and what is not. We'll have to see here. Let's see. So, it comes out July 25th. I wanted to read a description of the game. Remnant 2 is the sequel to the best-selling game Remnant from the Ashes that pits survivors of humanity against new deadly creatures and godlike bosses across terrifying worlds. Play solo or co-op with two other friends to explore the depths of the unknown to stop an evil from destroying reality itself. To succeed, players will need to rely on their own skills and those of their team to overcome the toughest challenges and to stave off humanity's excuse me, extinction. I believe you can play by yourself, too. Because this makes it sound like you can't. But I believe you definitely can. So, it they, they're showing a little bit of gameplay here. It looks cool. It does have that kind of... um it has like skill trees but not it almost looks like a skill tree mixed with kind of like fallout sort of how they do skills i don't know the game looks kind of cool but something in the back of my mind goes like uh i don't know right we'll have to see of course gunfire games publisher gearbox july 25th sonic superstars fall 2023 this is actually what got me very excited for a Sonic game in a long time because I am not a huge Sonic guy. Everyone knows that listens to this show. Not a big Sonic guy at all. Very, very, very turned off about anything Sonic most of the time, if not all of the time. But this looks actually very good. I'm very excited for Sonic Superstars. Uh, I hope it is now the second get a good Sonic game uh, because there's only two of them. This one in Sonic Mania. Everything else is pretty bad. Uh, of course, I'm joking. But as a as a observer of Sonic fandom, I do hope this is good. One, because it just seems like you, you Sonic fans just never get good games. So I hope this is going to work out. And it looks like it's going to work. I mean, it looks great. It really does look great. I am very, very, very excited. Please, this is day one for me. I saw some people complaining that this is 60 bucks. I don't know. I, it looks worth 60 bucks to me. I don't know why people got mad about that. Uh, I assume Sonic fans don't care. Because they'll, they'll, you know, they're going to buy it if it was $100. But I saw other people, maybe maybe they were outside fans, kind of. Except, I don't know what you thought it would be priced. Maybe because it's a Sonic game, you think 40 bucks. I don't know. I assume there's enough content there to justify the $60. And at least the, from uh, first glance, the um, production value at a glance looks like it's worth 60 bucks. We'll have to see. Fall this year. We talked about this before. Hanke Star Rail is coming to PS5 Q4. It finally has a date. We talked about this actually at the when it was showed at the PlayStation Showcase. 
when it was just kind of showed off a little bit. This kind of got showed off a tiny bit again. It looks like it's a Hoyoverse game. It is Genshin Impact again, pretty much. So get excited. I'm not playing this. It looks good, but it's a free to play and it's a gotcha game. I'm not not going to fall for it, Chief. So I have nothing else to add. Uh, I am happy for people who are happy, though, of course. This one got me excited. Lies of P. September 13th. It did get a date. It did get delayed out of August. But it does have a demo out right now, which is which was kind of like, oh, here's here's, you know, here's a little bit of sugar with the with the pill you have to take. So it was delayed out of August. Not shocking. Coming out September 13th now. Not too far away, of course. And then you have a demo to go try it out. I downloaded it. Actually, it's sitting on my console. I need to play it. Uh, I've heard this is a very, very good Souls like experience. This is probably as I don't want to get too excited, but people are saying this is as close as as we've gotten to a Souls like that isn't from from. That's pretty high praise. It's still, of course, not as good. We all know that it it, it will probably never happen that we get a Souls like that is as good as as it would from me. But. This gives me hope that we'll get very close. I'm very excited. And the premise is very cool. I like it. I like the look of it. I like the the music that they showed off. I liked that Jiminy Cricket's with you. I like that you're Pinocchio. And it's, it's very weird and strange. I, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, next up, Sandland. This is from Akira Toriyama. This was already announced. I don't know where it was announced. Um, but they were announced somewhere. Because I remember seeing this before, I think. And this is, of course, a curious theory about the creative Dragon Ball, and it's very much his art style. People seemed to get excited for this game, so I'm happy for them. I like how it looks, and apparently... Oh, there's a mango, too. Yeah, yes, there is a mango. So maybe I was thinking about that when it was announced. Hold on. Sandland... Game. Let's see. I could have swore this was announced somewhere else. I don't know. Let's read the quick uh, descriptions from Steam. Sandland is an action RPG where you become a main character as Beelzebub, a fiend prince. Lead your company of heroic misfits and explore the legendary world of Sandland, developed by the creator of Dragon Ball and Dr. Slump, Akira Toriyama. Very excited. Developer ILCA Inc. Publisher Bandai Namco. And there's much more. Dive into a desert world where both humans and demons suffer from an extreme water shortage. Play as and watch the fiend Prince Beelzebub, Sheriff Roe, and Demon Thief set off on an adventure in search of a legendary spring hidden in the desert. That's kind of cool. They're looking for water in this very big desert. And, I mean, you look at this. It is... <laughs> it's it's a curious drama. I mean, so, if, if you're into that, be excited. There's a manga, too, if you want to read that. Uh, they announced an Annapurna showcase that I believe will be live as of you listening to this. Uh, and I think the game, Cook- I think a new game called Cocoon was announced at the showcase. Let's see here. No, no, this was June 29th. Sorry, it has not happened. I, th- I could swear it was something. I'm- I must be thinking of something else. Why do I why do I know Cocoon? Why why do why is Cocoon in my head? Give me a second, achievers. Cocoon and Aperno. Was that announced today, but just not as part of something? Wow, that's very pretty. Let's see. Cocoon. I'm sure people at home are screaming right now. Like, oh, you know, it was this is why you know it. Oh, it, it was previewed. Cocoon is coming 2023. Uh, it's coming at Cocoon is an upcoming title. Boy, Master of the World, Leaping Mechanics, Unrival Cosmic, Fisher Grishin. Oh, this was announced in 2022. That's why it was in my head. And I saw it came back up again uh, today because people are previewing it at Games Fest. That's why. That's way off. I apologize for that, Jeepers. Because uh, I remember seeing it today and then I was like, oh, the Annapurna Showcase happened. And then I was like, and and then I was like, wait, wait, no, it wasn't announced. So I apologize for that. I was I was way off. But June 29th for the showcase, it looks like we're going to see something new. Maybe. Uh, I assume the stray will be coming to Xbox announcement will be there. That's all I have for as insight. Um, Throne of Li- Throne and Liberty. I couldn't tell if this might have. Um, no, this wasn't an ad, but it, it seemed like an ad free to play game. No, I have nothing to say about this. Now, Warhaven seemed kind of cool. 
so not probably something I won't actually play. But it does look cool. Warhammer on a free to play PvP me medieval fantasy combat game for two teams of up to 16 players each. Choose your soldiers, lead your squad into combat, and incinerate as a powerful immortal to turn the tide of war. Looks cool. Looks like one of, it looks like a four honor, but turned to eleven with like magic and these things. Cool, not for me. Very excited for people though. Party Ammos, I believe the same developers who made uh, Oh my god, what's that name? What's the game called? Um Jesus Christ. Oh, it's so popular too. I'm blanking on the name. It's gonna come out September 20th. Party Animals is that game where like you're playing as silly animals and you're like picking people up. It's very similar to um Jesus, what's that game called? Oh my god, I am off my game today, Achievers. I apologize. Let's see. They recreate games made the uh, is making this. So let's see what else they made. Recreate games. Cause there's a game I'm thinking of. Recreate games. What have you made? Wow, they it's funny how silly their game looks, but how professional their um <laughs> uh uh website is. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, yeah, they only have released party it looks like they're only making party animals. They've only and this is their first game. So maybe I'm crazy. Yeah, maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah, I've lost it. Let's move on. Let's see here. Crash Team Rumble comes out June 20th. Cool. Looks like a Smash Brothers mixed with like a... Like an arena battler? Sorta? Looks like there's items that you use. I don't know. It Sure. Cool. Game of the show for me is next. Alan Wake 2. October 17th gets a date, gets a small trailer. I I I I am excited. I think this is my most anticipated game of the year. Maybe even over Spider-Man 2, which I know is kind of crazy for a bunch of people. Of course, we'll talk about that later in the show. But Alan Wake 2 gets me very, very excited. It looks so, so good. And I really do think people sleep on the Alan Wake series and how good it was. Alan Wake 1 was a great game. And uh, Alan Wake American Nightmare is pretty good too. I feel like people are just, just kind of ignore it. I feel like people should try it out more maybe. Like give it a shot more. Uh, get excited. I know the guy, Um, of course, um, Sam Lake came out and was like, you know, you don't have to play the first one, but you can and you'll get more lore and things. I think people should really play the first one. It's remastered. It's on the current gen consoles. Give it a shot. And and I really do think you might like it. Now, if you're not into the kind of... I know a lot of people were like... Uh, and I was having a discussion with... I think I think it was with Emmett. Where he's like, I you know, I wasn't really into like... Oh, oh, you know, now you can shoot him. Like after the light thing. But I don't know. That kind of... That was cool. And then there was like the flare mechanic in the game. That was really cool too. Get excited if if you like the Resident Evils, if you the the remakes, if you like kind of the Dead Space atmosphere, I really do think you're gonna like this game. If you like controls, very weird story, and if you like weird stories, this is gonna be strange. Be ready to to be kind of bewildered and and kind of uh, confused at times. But I, give it give it faith. Remedy is a great studio. Great studio. Control was great. It had of course huge problems at the end of that game, but the whole game is very good and the gameplay is solid. I have nothing but high hopes for this game. High, high hopes. Warhammer Sports Space Marine 2. I know people really like these games. Shout out to you guys. It looks great. I might try it now because it does look very good. But I have nothing else to add. I know Warhammer is huge right now and it's getting even bigger. Go at it. Yes, Your Grace Snowfall. This look cool. It was. It looked like a sort of text adventure. Kind of. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. It, it looks whatever. I couldn't really tell what it was. I don't think it was a very good trailer. Let's see if we can get a synopsis for it. Not synopsis, of course, a description. In this new reality where monsters seem closer, enemies stronger, and your petitioners struggling more than ever. 
your duties as king must continue. It will be your responsibility to rebuild the trust of your kingdom, protect your family, and survive the upcoming winter. Yeah, it looks like a text-based game. It's both it's by and published and developed by Brave at Night. It does did not have a release date uh, shown. Uh, so it looks like a more tech adventure kind of pentiment sort of thing. Cool. Looks pretty. I, I I'm on the fence. I, I like these types of games. These games are for me, but I gotta see more. Gotta see more. I, it, like I, I immediately go like, mm, it feels like you're hiding stuff. I don't know because you're kind of hiding the gameplay clearly from the trailer. Toxic Commando 2024. I liked this trailer. This was cool. It, it had the um, you know, shot through the heart. and like you know, they were all singing it together. It was very cute. I liked it. Uh, Toxic Commando looks great. It's I guess John Carpenter is involved, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I I think he likes games or something. I, I I don't know the connection if I'm being honest. Uh, I think I think I remember reading that once. Don't really know. It's being published by Focus Entertainment. Uh, let's see here. In the near future, an experiment attempt to harness the power of the Earth's core ends in a terrifying disaster. The release of the Sludge God. <laughs> this reminds me of, um, wasn't there a movie called Toxic Commando? Toxic Avenger, I think is what I'm thinking of. It's like a really bad movie in like the mid 80s, right? I don't know. That, that reminds me of this so much. I can't, I can't see this and not think of the Toxic Avenger. Uh, this eldritch abomination begins terraforming the area, turning soil to scum and to living to undead monsters. However, the genius behind the experiment has he plans to make things right. All he needs is a team of competent, highly trained mercenaries to get the job done. Unfortunately, those are all too expensive. Expe uh, sorry, those are all too expensive, which is why he's hired the toxic commandos. <laughs> I love how see, like uh, melodramatic dramatic that is. It's very cool. Take control of one of the commandos, team up with your friends, and send the sludge god and his horde of things that should never be back to the underworld. Choose a class that matches your play style. Pile in your favorite ride and unload an array of gunfire and grenades. Uh, these are the things. If you're kind of person who likes buddy movie vibes and over the top humor. Teaming up with friends to face down hordes of monsters, an explosive cocktail of visceral FPS action, upgrading your skills and testing new abilities against increasing the hardcore challenges, saving the planet against impossible odds, then now's your time to go commando. Very funny. I like it so far. It's coming to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, and S. I'm happy. I'm happy. This looks good. I, I want to see more. I think I'll play this for sure. Doesn't come out to next year, so no rush, but I'm excited. Now, Boulder's Gate 3 is up next. I don't think I talk about this too much, but I'm a big Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance 1 and 2 fan from the PS2 generation. And I do not think this game is going to be for me because I'm looking for that specifically. And it's kind of tainted. Tainted in quotes, not you know for them, not for me. Uh, what I want out of these games, it looks good good i think i honestly the trailer was bad i think the other trailers were much better and of course this is the same team behind divinity original sin 1 and 2 which are some people's favorite games of all time because of how deep those mechanics are now that is like hardcore hardcore rpg elements like there's roles that happen you have to like get like into it like like it, those are very hardcore very deep very text heavy so if you're looking for that in this, hey, let's see. Um, and this uh, has been in early access, I believe, since October 8th or 6th of 2020. Yeah, this is an early access game. Yeah, the actual release date. Sorry, that was rude. Um, I yawned. The actual release date. is not mentioned. I don't think we have a date when it becomes out of early access yet. So you could play it now. I will stay away until it is done. I'm being honest with you. Next up. Probably talk of the show, um, if not for the ending of the show. Spider-Man 2 coming out October 20th. Interesting that the date was here. We didn't really get anything else other than the date. We got some talk about Eddie Brock not being Venom. That was kind of the big news story that people are running with. I mean, I thought we knew that. Everyone took that as new information. If you played Spider-Man 1, I feel like you should have known that. 
there's only two possibilities who who it could be. I won't spoil it here. I don't want I don't want to ruin anyone's thing. I think if if the two people that immediately come to your mind, it's probably the two people I'm thinking of. That can be Venom. Maybe it'll be both of them throughout the story. Who knows? Cool. But I've seen more. There wasn't much else to go off of. We had the date. Interesting that PlayStation didn't show it at their own showcase. If you go by statistics, more people watch this than the showcase by a lot. So maybe it's smart of them to not show it at their showcase, I guess. I don't know. Or you also get another kind of news cycle, right? You get the new cycle of it being shown with the trailer, and then you get the no- another new cycle of showing the date and them talking about Eddie Brock. Maybe that's, the- I don't know. Maybe there's a game that PR is playing that. I'm just too dumb to know. Next up, this is probably the, this is one of the strangest games I've seen in a very long time. So it's called Pow World. This is coming into early access in January. This is a game where you have Pokemon with guns. And that's literally what the game is. It is if he, if you gave a Pikachu a machine gun. That's what this is. I, I don't know. I this looks <laughs> this looks pretty bad because there's like two clashing art styles. And I know that's the point. It's you're meant to have these cute things with these like death machines. But it literally looks like a gun is in a Pokemon game and it doesn't look good. It doesn't. There's a hilarious scene in the trailer. That the sheep characters have like MG 41s or whatever they call like giant machine guns from like World War Two or something. And that that is hilarious. Not in the hilarious way. I don't I think the devs want though i'm not it's not hilarious like i can't wait to play this it's hilarious that exists i am not touching this with the temple bull i doubt this i doubt this will even be good this looks like a poor in in uh, a poor imitation of pokemon and it looks like they're just going for the shock value of look we gave them guns and can you really make a game about that can you i don't know i have nothing nothing else to add to that Black Desert gets a. So I was actually kind of confused about this. Let's look this up. Black Desert. Because there's Black Desert online, of course. This was just Black Desert. Is this a sequel? Or continuation? Let's see here. Black Desert. Because if I'm confused, I'm sure someone at home is kind of confused too, right? All right. So it looks like just more Black Desert Online. Oh, wow. There's a bunch of classes. Holy. That's kind of cool. Sage, Corsair. That's cool. Okay, so it looks like it's just more Black Desert. It's coming. Cool. June uh, 14th, Journey to the Realm of Legends, specifically. So that's probably what's coming to Black Desert Online. Maybe it was. Is it just called Black Desert now? I have not kept up with this game. I apologize if this is like no knowledge. So it comes out in four days as of recording. Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. This looked terrible. Did anyone like this at all? It did give Deep Rock Galactic Eyes, which I know people really liked that. But this didn't look nearly as good in terms of the actual gameplay that you were looking at. I mean, this looked shockingly bad. Like, shockingly. Like, I was shocked how terrible this looks. This reminds me of Gollum. By the way, your boy was 100% right on Gollum. What did I say as soon as it was announced? As soon as we got rumors. It's terrible. Boom, nailed it. Did it take a genius? Probably not. Why do I keep getting things right that were brain dead? Maybe the answer or the question answers itself, huh? Anyways, Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. Looks like you're going to be mining... You're going to be uh, I read that you're going to like better forges throughout the, the as you mine. Oh, I mean, who the f- uh, sorry for the profanity. Who the fuck cares about this? Who cares? Really? Like, let's ask ourselves. Did you it says the same with Gollum at no point did you ask yourself, 
oh my god, I want to know about I want to know more about Gollum. I want to know so much more about Gollum. I want to play as him. Who wants that? That sounds horrible. And they're doing it again. Who said, you know what? Moria, great place. I want I love Moria so much that I want to play a dwarf mining in Moria. What is happening? And why does it look so bad? Why does it look so bad? Do they not have money? What is going on? The art style looked atrocious. It looks so bad. Why? It's Lord of the Rings. What is going on? It's the same as Gollum. Why does Gollum look so fucking bad? You, it is Lord. This is one of the most important IPs of mankind. <laughs> I mean that with no hyperbole. Lord of the Rings is one of the most important IPs ever made. And we're doing this with it. Return to Moria, Lord of the Ring Gollum. Sorry for the rant. I just can't. It's I it, I love Lord of the Rings. And to see it just thrown around is gross. Have some fucking respect. Have some respect. I don't mean to be mean to the developers of this game. Maybe it comes out and it's a huge hit, and I apologize. But I, I, seeing it right now, the way it was shown, it looks gross. Why does it look so bad? Why does Deep Rock Galactic look better than this? What is that even? I apologize for ranting. But that just, it angers me. It's so important. This IP is beautiful. The story around it, around how it was made, how Tolkien made it, what it was based off of, what it's done to the fantasy genre. I mean, it's literally made a genre almost on its own. And we're just, we're, we're just making this, this. We're making these games. Come on, man. Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis was up next. This looks kind of cool. It looks like they're actually going to show me what the Final Fantasy VII was about. If you've listened to the show before, you've known I've, I've tried to play Final Fantasy VII. It's just so like games from that era just don't age well. So it's just hard to play it and see these triangles taped together fighting things. I I I always say this about Super Mario 64 and really any of the and Nintendo 64 kind of polygonal area where they're trying to figure out like how to make these 3D spaces look good. It's so hard to go back to. It is so hard to get back to because it's hard to feel for any of these characters because they look so bad. <laughs> they look so ugly. That's why I was so excited for Final Fantasy VII Remake that we would get this story retold and I could experience it for the first time. Joke's on me. <laughs> it's joke's on me. So maybe this thing will do it. I'm unclear how this thing even works. It's in early development. It looks like it's doing all of the Final Fantasy VII games story-based, but it's a MOBA game, so it looks like it's also going to do the gross, like time thing where like you i think you only have so much energy to play things i'm good i hope it's good though so i can play it i wish i could just pay money for this thing and just play it that would be too easy of course banishers of eden this looks great this is by don't nod don't nod very talented studio i think i've had some misses here and there right not think. They have had some misses. I, I hear a lot of people like Vampire. I played it, didn't see anything worth of value and left. I loved how it started, but once the game starts once the game has really started and you're really able to do everything. Uh, no, no thanks. No thanks. And what's funny is it's what I always wanted in a game like that. But but like, hey, maybe you don't actually want what you're asking for, right? Uh, oh, and the story looks, um, I've, I've talked so much about Don't Not. I didn't even talk about the game. I was about to move on, which is funny. Uh, I want to read everyone the synopsis because this game looks really, really good. 
like I, I really do think this is going to be very good. I think they might miss a little bit with the combat because I do. I just really, do, I'm really worried that Don't Not, of course, being published by Focus, is is being messy with the action. I I, I don't know. The, the vampire when I was playing the game didn't feel great. Hunt ghosts as two memorable characters in a story-driven action RPG where your decisions have dramatic consequences. Solve haunting cases and battle supernatural forces, combining Antia's spiritual powers and Red's arsenal. New Eden, 1695. Ante Durot and Red Mac Wrath are lovers and banishers, ghost hunters who vow to protect the living from the threat of lingering ghosts and specters. Following a disastrous last mission, Ante is fatally wounded, becoming one of the spirits she loathes. In the haunted wilds of North America, the couple desperately search for a way searches for a way to liberate Antea from her plight. Immerse yourself in a beautiful, intimate, and powerful story between two fated lovers. As banishers, enter the life of New Eden's communities and solve haunting cases in a mythical, lore-rich world plagued with supernatural characters and ancient secrets. Use your wits or combine Antea's spiritual powers and Red's arsenal to defeat and banish the souls tormenting the living. Does that not sound sick to everyone at home? I'm very excited for this game. I think Don't Nod, I have faith in, I have faith that they are have been working on their action might, like how strong they are at making these action segments, and I really hope they have put all of their might into this game, because I want it to be great. That premise sounds so cool. It reminds me of how Redfall, where like the premise is so, 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 so good, so you're just hoping they execute. Let's hope it's not Redfall, of course. I'm very happy of Banishers of Eden. Up next, Man Who Erased His Name. This is a Yakuza game. Cool. Nothing to add. I don't play those games. I'm very excited for the people who play them. You get a new game. I like that. I, I saw that. So I know that people loved Like a Dragon. Yakuza Like a Dragon. I know some Yakuza fans didn't love the gameplay of Like a Dragon. They want the Yakuza games. So this is kind of like a, a the kind of, you know, you still get your Yakuza game here. But we are going to make more like a dragon. They've already said that they want to make more like a dragon because of how uh, I think that's the biggest selling game in the Yakuza. If I remember right, I think that sold the most out of all Yakuza games. I think by a lot, too. Uh, let's see. Under the Waves, August 23rd. This looked cute. Looked, he was like kind of underwater. Uh, it looks like he had an underwater station. Not for me, but I can see this being for somebody. Uh, up next, we saw a trailer for Call of Duty Season 4 for Warzone. Cool. Moving on. Next up, Fay Farm. Uh, Starlight Valley mixed with, like, a set Animal Crossing. Like, aesthetic? Aesthetic? I mean, that's pretty much what they said when they revealed the game, I believe. <laughs> Excuse me. I am so sorry. It looks fine. If, if you're into that game style, hey, there. There you go. And, hey, shout out to Jeff Keighley with the amount of um diversity at these shows i i think it, well i'll talk about it with my final thoughts of the show but they nailed the pacing a better it's still too long but they at least they do show a diversity i'm not like other people where i'm upset when they show games like this because they're usually gone in a few minutes so like you don't really you know you can sit there kind of appreciate the game for a second and then you know it's out of your mind in a few seconds so i don't i'm not hating that I like when a lot of these games are being shown because, you know, you have a lot of people watching your show. You want to hit all, all, all as many audiences as you possibly can in this two hours. So I don't blame them at all. I, I like that they show these random little games like these. Next up, we have an ad for Marvel Snap. Uh, they come out in a I, I I love Marvel Snap. I have gotten addicted to Marvel Snap, actually. Uh, why, why is my phone? Sorry about that. Um, I've been addicted to Marvel Snap uh, last three months, pretty much. Addicted is a strong word. I play a lot. I play a lot of it when I have new challenges and things. And I've made Infinite like the last three seasons, which I'm very excited about that. Um, anyways, as a fan of Marvel Snap, this was a terrible, terrible ad all the way through. All the way through. I love Ben Brode. He's awesome. I fucking love that guy. He's very fun. He seems very nice. I like him. I like his little aesthetic. I like his laugh. He's very fun. He, he's a very fun guy. He's great for what he has to do out there, like to get people going, get people energized, get people happy. 
I don't know if he wrote this script or someone else did. This was a terrible, terrible, terrible way of trying to get people into Marvel Snap. Terrible. He came out, said, hey, we got a new Conquest mode. It's next week. He didn't detail the game, didn't tell people anything about it, didn't describe how the game works, didn't tell you, hey, it's a Marvel, it's a Marvel, I know that he said card-based game, but, like, describe, like, hey, you know, these are fast games that, that you're in and out, and, 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 like, I know they had limited time, but they wasted a lot of time on that skit that, let's be honest, and I love that guy, he, I think, I, I don't remember his name, is it, like, Sung Woo or something? God, if that's not his name, that's the most racist thing I've ever said. I apologize if that's not his name, but I think that's his name. I follow him on Twitter. He's very funny. Um, th it was funny, but what did it serve? Right? That seems like that should have been in a uh, in in a video for Marvel Snap players, not in a debut. Not it's not a debut, but in a way of showing off the game to new players right like that would have been funny for like marvel snap people but it should not have been let's see sung S i'm hopefully i don't but bunch of the sung Wan chow he's a voice actor and he does youtube stuff and he's very funny and i'm glad he got this because yeah i mean he, i'm sure he got paid a lot of money to do that but like I, it doesn't it should not have been here should have been you know this is somewhere where you put in a marvel snap like hey this is our video showing the patch notes and also here's something funny that we have not here you want to debut and show off the game don't you to get people interested in the game did if you if i show that to anyone would anyone say oh i want to play marvel snap now what the f like why why did you make it Ugh, wayfinder um why am i blaming on this game it definitely didn't show an impression as you can see Wayfinder. Oh, this is um, I remember this. Yes, this is like the. It kind of looks like a Smite esque art style, sort of. Uh, let's see if we can get a. It looks like a faster like. There we go. Become a Wayfinder. Unlock their powers as you choose your path and play style while pushing back a hostile force that is overtaking your world. Control the chaos as you directly shape and customize the endless adventures you go on with friends because Wayfinders are stronger together. So it looks like uh, this is a developer by Airship Syndicate, published by Digital Extremes. Yeah, it looks like a co-op action RPG game. Looks cool. I probably won't play it, let's be honest. I think it's coming to... PS5 and PC. Uh, there was a Fortnite trailer. Uh, sorry, there's a Fortnite ad. And then there's also a Fortnite Wilds seasonal thing that was announced later in the show. I'm just going to do both of those now. If you're excited for Fortnite, hey, there's your new Fortnite season. I have nothing else to add. I loved Fortnite. I played it for a very long time. I have played enough Fortnite, I think. I don't think I need to go back to it. Uh, Space Trash Scavenger looked very cute. Uh, it's exactly what it says. You are a space trash scavenger. You're out in space. You're getting trash. Uh, for clearly the worst segment of the entire show by a lot. Twisted Metal. July 27th is coming to Peacock. This trailer was horrible. And I want to be very clear. This was horrible. This show looks very, very bad. I want people to understand, and I, I tweeted... um at Richard Hogue about this, because he mentioned kind of my similar thoughts about this. If you show, if this is what you show me to get me to watch the show, how bad is this, is this show? This is the clip. I'm supposed to be like, oh my God, I want to see the show. That was, that was bad. That was, I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I saw some people agreeing. It didn't seem like many people were dogging on this. Which, hey, I'm glad. I, you know, I don't want to see people just bully a, a clip. But I didn't see that many people, like, dismayed with, with it. I, I was shocked. I mean, I really was shocked about how bad this clip was. Jeff Keighley can't control what they send him for these things. And uh, this was clearly an ad. And if it wasn't, Jeff Keighley, what are you doing? Um, th this should be an ad, though. I'm sure he got paid for this. Quite a bit, probably. Um, 
and it, I mean, it really did. <laughs> it just looks so. I mean, I have nothing else to say other than like, I I shout out to him singing the thong song. It just didn't work. A couple points. One, the the guy who um, uh, Will Arnett voices Sweet Tooth, but he's not the body, obviously. Samoa Joe from actually WWE is the body, which is very funny. But it's obvious, and maybe it's because I know this information that it seems obvious, but it's obvious that that's not true. Like his body movements were slightly off on the voice. So the jokes don't work because he's saying things before he does things. And it's like, oh, this doesn't look good. And again, if this is what they have to show, how bad is the show? Moving on. Let's Fonga 2023. Eh, I don't have much to say about this. Um, It looked like something people would be excited for. It kind of looks like a... Oh no no no! Oh no 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 no! I did like this. So this looks like unclear how this works. So so this this kind of looks like a Hades, right? Roguelite. I can't tell. I'm reading. I'm reading a little bit about it right now. So it looks like you are literally working with echoes of yourself that have died. So as you're playing the game, you'll have more echoes of yourself like fighting with you, which is kind of cool. And it's an action RPG. I mean, hey, this sounds sick. I'm excited. So it's a roguelike, but the way you progress further is when you die, you have yourself playing with you. Like as you're playing. That, that sounds sick. I'm down for that. Immortals of Avium. I don't know if I love this game or hate it. I, I don't know. It, it looks very pretty with it, with how they make the spells and their hand movements and these things. Like, that looks very pretty, but then the game doesn't look great. The writing seems pretty bad. Uh, at, at least at first glance. Not super excited for the game, but I want to see more. I, I Right now, I'm, I'm not buying it, right? I'm not a must-buy. This is nowhere near my must-buys, but... If they're able to turn around just a little bit, I feel like I'll be tempted into like, let me try it out. But for a full price game at launch, I don't think I'm going to be there. Don't think so at all. And we already talked about Fortnite. And of course, they end the show with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming out early next year. They showed a trailer kind of semi spoiling something sort of about the other game. Not really. If you, I guess if you don't really know much about Final Fantasy VII, I am so excited. I don't really have anything to say other than it looks great the combat looks great it looks like more final fantasy 7 uh reboot cool yeah sick it didn't look i mean i'm beyond i was kind of shocked how not different it looked to, if i'm being real with everybody i i get it. let me be clear i'm excited for the game i'm playing it day one i'm gonna be happy alongside everyone else when i play this game I was shocked that it didn't look different at all. The closest thing we got was, oh, they can do tag team moves now, which, again, is super cool. Super cool. Like, the one where Aerith and Tifa like, combined in this, like, giant ball, and, like, Tifa's like, bah, 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 and, like, Aerith, like, like, shoots something down. That looks sick. Are you kidding me? But, like, is that is that the only thing new? And maybe, hey, maybe I'll be so shocked with the story and how good it is that I won't care if that's not any different. And I already thought Final Fantasy VII um remake was a little it was like kissing um overhyped and over um overrated a little so like maybe i'm just not the guy for this but again i'm playing this day one this looks great this looks this this game will be great i'll say that it might even be a 10 out of 10 but it, it's the you know the other one it just looks so much the same we'll see And that's the that's the show. That's gonna be the show for Summer Games Fest 2023. I was actually very pleased with the showcase. I thought it was very good. I thought it was paced better than other than other years by a lot. And the and I've always said this. I think it's still too long, but I don't think it can get any shorter than this. It actually wasn't even two hours. I think it was like an hour and forty five. 
I I think he just ne- it needs to be a certain length, I assume, to make Jeff enough money. I don't know how much money this guy's making. I'm sure it's a I, I'm sure he's made millions of dollars off these things. But when I see it, I'm just how do I say this? This was great. This was a great showcase. I liked it a lot. Pacing was off. It's too long, but I don't think it will ever change. There's still a lot of ads. It's clear when something is being at, like added at me. But, you know, I get it. He's got to pay it. I understand these things can't get any any less because it might not, you know, he, he might not be able to or he just wants to make more money, which can't really blame him, I guess. Uh, but it was very good. I think it was much better than the PlayStation Showcase, which I can't believe I'm actually saying that, but I do think it is. I, th- I think it was much better, actually, than the PlayStation Showcase. I don't think that's actually crazy to say. I think most people would probably agree that it was better than the PlayStation Showcase. Uh, aside from that, that's really all I have to add. I hope you guys liked it as well. Let me know if you did or didn't. Comments below. Of course, we have the Xbox Showcase, which... I'm trying not to get too excited about, but I can't help it. Fable's gonna be there... Avowed, of course, will be there. And we'll have to see. I am very, very hyped. Let's go into what have you been playing. Then we're, of course, going to end the show with date updates. Of Now, of course, this is a question I ask not only you at home, but myself. What have you been playing? Now, I have been playing Diablo 4. So much Diablo 4. So much Diablo 4 that I have two characters. One at level 49, and my second one's level 21, 22. Loving the game. So good. This game is so, so good. This is a very great game. I am happy with my purchase. I purchased this. I purchased the early edition, whatever it was called. Not the ultimate, the one below. I think it was deluxe. Can't be more pleased with the game. It's so good. The lore is very fascinating. The gameplay is so, so good. I'm playing... Uh, a druid werewolf right now on my first playthrough i like poison things and uh zip around with like my shred ability very fun and my second character is a necromancer that doesn't use um uh the skeletons like i sacrifice the skeletons to get bigger buffs on my character so i'm using i'm doing that too i'm having so much fun in this game really and this is not this is i won't say that I played a little bit of Diablo 3. This isn't my first time in this universe, though, of games, right? Like I said, I've played uh, uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1 and 2. I played Champions of Norath back in the day, 1 and 2 on PS2. Like, this isn't my first time to the action RPG genre. So I am I am not disfamiliar with this playstyle, but I find them, they really did kind of nail that feeling of going into uh, dungeons. It's really cool when you do go into a dungeon. The story so far is very good. Feels a bit long, but I do like where we're going. I'm curious. I'm only on Act Three. I'm at. I think I'm at the very end of Act Three. I don't know. And I know there's more after this. And I and I do like that that and, and of course the game does this, but you kind of like travel throughout Sanctuary as you're doing these uh, quests. It's just it's fun. I'm having a good time. I think the gameplay is super tight. It's clear that they polished the the ever loving hell of this game server stability for me again for me was very very good i have been disconnected a few times but i'm usually right back in the game i've only lost progress like i think once or twice but it wasn't that bad i do hate that the and i understand why they probably have to do this but i can't you can't really save when you're in like dungeons or whatever you would whatever you would call the story segments where you go into um because if you do you're you're at the beginning but it still saves like that you did stuff but it doesn't save that you traveled through the map so you have to re-travel through the map to get to like where you were so i don't love that i wish they had some work around with that i understand they probably have to do that so you don't like manipulate spawns or something I, I i'm sure there's a good reason it's just that is one mega frustration i have that like once I have started something, I have to kind of commit to the end or if I uh, and if if I like quit out or I have to go or I stop playing the game, I'm pretty much giving up that progress. And, I, and that's not very fun. Aside from that, though, this is a great game. I really, really, really enjoyed this game. I'm happy that it turned out so well. 
I'm happy. It seems like everyone's kind of playing it. It seems like it's actually hit that echelon that kind of Breath of Wild did, where everyone's kind of sharing, like, oh, you know, I'm doing this build with this. And, you know, oh, look what I got. So it looks like they're doing very well. I'm I'm happy that this team kind of got to eat their flowers. I understand that people don't like Activision. I don't like Activision for a lot of things they've done either, but it's hard to blame all of Activision and everyone who made on who it's hard to blame everyone who made this game. I'm messing this up. Oh my god. It's hard to blame everyone who made this game on the actions of everyone that fucked up at Blizzard. That is incredibly messy, but you understand what I mean. I would hate to take out my frustration at Blizzard at everyone who made this game. Uh, clearly, our, I mean, hundreds of hours of these people have reported in this game. So I'm very happy. But the game, very happy of its success. I'm enjoying the game. And it's good to see everyone is enjoying the game along with me. Of course, we only have one date update for today. Capcom announced a showcase Monday, June 12th, 2023. Cool. I'm very, very happy that Capcom is such. It seems to be in such a healthy spot right now. They really were. I mean, people were literally calling them Crabcom. I remember that. I don't remember who popularized that. I just remember reading it online, I think. But like they were saying like they were Crabcom and these things. And and I never had a, a connection to Capcom growing up, really. I didn't play Mega Man. I didn't play any of the Resident Evils or anything like that. So I, I didn't really have a connection to them. And it's and I'm happy that they stick around. Oh, I played Street Fighter, so I had a slight connection to them. But I'm glad that they've stuck around and really found themselves again. And I want them to keep I want them to keep striving. I, I think Capcom is a great studio and I want them to stay with us. Very happy to see this. Next up, what's queued? Of course, this is a question that I ask not only myself, but I ask you at home, what is queued up? This could be a game, a TV show, a podcast, a movie, a manga, a comic book, a book, anything. What do you have queued up for the weekend? I, of course, have more Diablo. I have nothing really else to add. I will be playing more Marvel Snap. I am real deep in the Marvel Snap. I'm having so much fun. I just got Galactus unlocked over the weekend. I'm at collection level 4,100 something, I think. I don't know. It starts to blur together, but I am pull three complete. Just if you understand what that means at home and I'm slowly trying to get an enemy at this. Did I know? I didn't know. Sorry. There was a hair hair on my mic. It's bothering me. Give me one second. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's bothering me. There we go. It's off. I am pull three complete. I'm working on my pull four and five collection right now. They, they release so many cards that it is impossible for an average play. I, of course I am above average. I believe probably even went above that. Uh, I but I am not hardcore into where I have every card or anywhere close to a, every card. I'm missing probably ten of them out of pool five and four. Things like Dark Hawk, things like Jeff, Iron Lad, High Evolutionary, just name a few. So I'm I am missing a couple, probably not as many as ten, but pretty much close to it. Aside from that, that's really all of that. I need to go back to Zelda to finish it. I haven't. I have to be honest. I sat it down because. I, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest with everyone at home. I didn't want to beat it. <laughs> yeah, like, I didn't want it to end. So I like gave I gave it a break and be like, I'm going to come back to you after Diablo. And I kind of chilled and me and my wife went to the movies and watched uh, Into the Spider-Verse, which is great. It, no, it's is it is it Into the Spider-Verse? No, that was the first one, right? This one's Beyond the Spider-Verse. I don't know. They, whatever. The new one. I, I watched the new one. It was very fun. Very good. It was so good. It might be my favorite Marvel movie. To be honest with you. It's just so good the way it's made. It me it's messy, but it's good. And it's not my favorite, I should say, but it's very close. It is a messy movie, but I liked it. I also love that. Eh, I'm not going to spoil that, actually. Um, That's it. That's your show for the weekend. Just over an hour long show again. As a reminder, these are going to be going up at different times every week. Now, you know, not forever. A short testing period, we should say. And again, if you have a preference for the time, you just got to let me know. And I might put that into consideration. Of course, I will always consider thoughts, comments, compliments, anything from, of course, you at home, the achievers, that you have to add to the show. What do you think will make it better? What do you think that I'm doing that makes it worse? Et cetera. That's all I have for you this week. I hope you have a great one. I will see you for the Xbox showcase. I'll be doing a full breakdown of that, of course. I need to start doing watch alongs. I actually should get more familiar with streaming. 
This is just something I'm thinking of right now. I should get more familiar with streaming. I think I would be good at it. I think I should do more watch alongs and these things just to kind of dip my toe and toe and kind of get familiarized with streaming and these things. So that'll be in the back of my mind. I will, of course, be reacting and breaking down the Xbox showcase. I will see if I can get some money for that. I doubt I can. It will probably just be me because everyone is so busy doing their own stuff, of course. That's all I have for you this week. I appreciate everyone stopping in. Thank you for like, comment, subscribing. You know what to do. I appreciate it. Remember, five-star review if you can. Remember, patreon.com slash if you'd like to support the show. And until next time, go Chief. Have a wonderful day.